to that. <laughs> um, it was really important that we sang that song. You're going to see why. Okay. Um, interestingly enough, I usually write down my lectures. I wasn't allowed to do that. I'm not allowed to uh, think ahead. I'm just allowed to channel. Fascinating stuff. New territory for me. Anyway, um, um, one of my greatest teachers has always said to me, speak from the heart and you'll get their attention. So thank you for that, Sharon. Um, one of the things that I've been working on recently has been self-judgment. It's a huge, huge thing. Um, and, and when we talk of self-judgment, we, we really talk of judgment of everyone else at the same time. It is much easier to talk about judging about someone else and, and what we think of other people and how they think of us and all of those things. But when we break it down to the core, we're talking about how we feel about us and who we think we are and what we're working on. So, um, interestingly enough, um, I guess it was Thursday, my husband says to me, we're in the process of starting to get ready to sell our house. Um, we bought a new place and, and so it takes time as you all know. So I was, I was in the washroom getting ready for work that day and my husband had just repainted the ceiling in our bathroom and on the floor was an article. And it, um, it talks about um, Oshawa Fronts the Organ Thieves. Now, um, this is actually a band. Uh, most of the um, members are here from here in the Durham region. And I started reading a little bit about it. And it turns out I actually went to school with the lead singer. Um, he and I were actually really good friends in, in, in school. And we kind of lost contact. But I thought it was fascinating to see um, when they did the article, he, he wrote this part, and it's really interesting. I want you to hear it. i got to put my glasses on. Okay. Artist is a word that I find very interesting, says Chuck Coles. We all mirror society. We are all products of the environment that we have been born into and that some of us have chosen. Well, all of us have chosen that, but that's a whole different story. Some of us have just bigger platforms to speak our minds or to create or fix. Take abstract art, for example. That doesn't do much for me, but it reaches to someone within that community, <coughs> and that is what matters. There is something for everyone. They are leaving a part of their soul in their work and moving, moving an individual and provoking some sort of feeling or thought. And think, we have no choice. We all mirror society. Well, I agree with him to a point um, that we mirror society. Our, our consciousness um, naturally sticks with the things that we know. I, I don't want to say that I'm a medium because then people will think I'm different or weird or um, an outsider. I don't want to say that I'm... Um, what? Anything, right? It can be anything. Um, we have so many different pioneers in, in different ways, and yet um, it takes great courage to stand up and say, this is who I really am. And when we look at those things, uh, we, you know, we self-judge. And the beginning of self-judgment comes from the judgment of others. You know, if I do this... Um, Someone will think I'm stupid, or if I do that, they won't agree with me, or most of the time it's a negative process. It's not always a positive, um, because for whatever reason, our consciousness or our ego likes to shut it out. Um, believing in these lies that we tell ourselves keeps us in a safe zone, in a safe net. And as, as much as we like to be in that safe net, it's not always appropriate, you know? Um, my life is a perfect example of that. For 10 years, I fought spirit and didn't want to be a medium. I didn't want to, I didn't want to talk to people who passed away. I didn't want to share that information. I didn't want to be that person because I thought I would be judged for it. I thought I would be shamed for it. I thought, you know, oh, no one will like me and, and let's not go there. So I didn't do it and I fought and I fought and I fought. And it wasn't until I was pregnant with my son, spirit came to me and said, all right, Enough is enough. You need to do this. And I went, come on, I'm pregnant. I don't want to do this. I can't do this. Blah, blah, blah. And they said, you know what, truly, if you don't do this now, what kind of example are you going to put out for your son? And I went, oh, that's so not fair. <laughs> that's so not fair. You guys 
guys are, are killing me here. That's so not fair. And they said, but really, who are you not to be who you really are? And I went, <clears throat> okay, okay. I get it. Okay. So when we break down, um, when we break down the, you know, um, the who are you and what are you doing, we often look at, you know, who are the other people? Everybody will think this. Everybody. Well, who is everybody? Who is everybody for you? Everybody has a different everybody. You know, most of the time it's our parents and our upbringing. Sometimes it's our very close friends. Sometimes it's the the people who. Um, we think are, are doing the best thing that they can and yet we don't really know everything about that person's life. We don't know what their trials and tribulations are. We don't know um, um, what their internal battle is. I got lots of internal battles. I'm not going to stand here and tell you that I'm perfect. There's just no way. <laughs> but I am going to tell you that I am doing the best I can with what I've got. I am trying to move forward as best I can. Um, and so when, when I get this, when I wake up in the morning and I get all these, I could do this, I could do that, I could do this, and then the shoulds come in and the everybody's come in, I go, okay, I get it, I have to be part of society's norm, but how much of that norm do I really want to be? Do I really want to be the mirror of society? No, no, no. I want to be the person standing that reflects what's going on. I want to be the example. I don't want to be the reflection. I want to be who I really am. And then let society reflect that back to me. That was a huge step for me becoming a medium. Um, and as Ali says, I am. I'm, I'm booked. I'm booked solid now. Um, but I, you know, I have to tell you, I love what I do. I love interacting with people. I love giving them closure. I love bringing forward the people that they cared about so that they can um, understand that there is something after this lifetime that they can, they can grow. Um, yeah, it's fascinating, just fascinating stuff. There's, a, there's another thing I would like to read to you, um, if you don't mind. Not that you get much of a choice, really. <laughs> so. All right, here we go here. Now this is a this is a wonderful author. This is Don Miguel Ruiz. And uh, I'm, I'm a pretty big fan of his stuff, although everybody, you know, you have to take everybody's stuff with a little grain of salt. But anyway, here we go. The universe is simple. It's about cause and effect, action and reaction. If you don't like the way you are living your life, this is a reaction to the program that is ruling your life. The liar or the program is not even a part of you, but at the same time, it is a part of you because it's the way you identify yourself. So that's the everybody I'm talking about. The program creates the story, then it tries to make sense of the story by explaining and justifying everything to the main character. So it's about our thought process. What a setup. What a creation. Humans create an entire culture or philosophy of humanity. We create history, science, art, Olympic games, Miss Universe, you name it. It's our creation. It's beautiful and wonderful, but it's just a story. Your story is your creation. You are the artist with the force of life flowing through you. If you don't like your art, you have the power to change it. So again, it comes back down to thought process. Um, interestingly enough, back to, back to my life, because it's so fascinating, anyway, um, I, I, have a, I have a really close girlfriend of mine, um, we've been friends since we were knee-high to a gra grasshopper, and I got an email from her just two days ago, and she says to me, oh, I'm going to get emotional, sorry guys, she says to me, I don't know why you've abandoned our friendship. I don't know why you don't want to talk to me, and I don't know why. Um, I don't know why we're not communicating. But I, I have to tell you, I, I only want the best for you. I've only, I've only ever wanted the best for you, and so I'm a little hurt that we're not talking, and I'm a little saddened by it. But it's okay as long as you know I only want the best for you. And I took that. And I thought to myself, hmm, okay, there's obviously a problem here. But then I thought about it again and I thought, you know, this, this isn't mine. This is hers. 
She's the one that feels abandoned. It's not me. And the fact that we haven't communicated is just that life got in the way. Life got busy. So I wrote back to her and I said, you know, that was pretty judgmental. I don't know what made you think that I've thrown our relationship away. I've done nothing of the sort. Unfortunately, I'm working close to 10 hour days, trying to raise a family, trying to help my foundation grow. And I'm, I'm a sole business owner now, darling. So I said, I apologize that we haven't had lunch for about six months, but such is life. I said, by no means do I wish you any harm either. And when you're ready to come back to us and our relationship, I'm here for you. I got an email back. <laughs> I got an email back for sure. And she said to me, you know, I never thought about it that way. She said, I, I thought you just didn't want to talk to me anymore. And I said, no. I said, but you took the judgment of I wasn't communicating. And I said, it wasn't that I wasn't communicating. It's just that I, I wasn't taking the time to focus on you. I was focusing on me. So we've set a date for lunch. I hope it happens. But with my schedule, God only knows. Um, but I found it fascinating because she, she jumped right to the conclusion that I had thought that she had thought that I had abandoned her. And I hadn't. But that was her her whole life. Now when I reflect on it, her whole life she's been abandoned. She was abandoned by her parents, she was abandoned by her spouse, um, she was abandoned by a lot of her friends. And so unfortunately that's gonna be one of her life lessons. But it has nothing to do with me. Anyway. Um, so the, the self-judgment is certainly there and it's certainly prevalent in all of our lives. And moving forward, you know, um, <laughs> mom always says, you know, mantras, they're really, they're mantras and affirmations, right? Because they do. They take the time to change our thought process. They, they give us um, that perspective, that outsider's perspective to say, no, 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 I'm going to be positive, I'm going to move forward in my life, and this is how I'm going to do it. Um, so as, as her favorite mantra goes, the universe supports me in all that I do. Um, and, I, and I can't say that I, I disagree with that whatsoever. I totally agree with that. And when it comes back down to, to self-judgment and, and working on those things, I know I've got a long way to go. Um, I'm taking the time to go and I'm trying very hard to grow every day. Um, but it's hard. And you guys know that. I'm not telling you anything you don't know already. Not, nothing that you haven't lived through yourselves. Um, so let me leave you with this, this one last thought. Um, this is another, another really great book. Um, and it's uh, Dan Millman. I've used him a couple of times. The Laws of Spirit. And this one, and I use this one a lot with my clients. Um, when I do work. Um, a lot of times I'm explaining, if some of you know about my whole blackboard theory and choosing our life lessons and that. Um, and if you don't, I'd be delighted to explain it to you. But anyway, I usually talk to my clients about this one because I think this is probably my favorite all-time quote. It says here, Judgments are a human invention. That God is not here to judge us, but to provide us with the means of, to learn from our errors so that we can grow and evolve. If you can accept that God doesn't judge you, why should you judge others? Anyway, I'll leave that with you. Thank you so much for letting me share.